Recordology. Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. So glad that you could join me tonight. Let's have some fun. Hope you're having a wonderful week, and I hope that the rest of the week goes really well. So, today we are going to be taking a look at some oddities. These are what I like to call the freak show of Radio Shack. If you remember, we were recently at a Radio Shack in an eastern Colorado town, still had a private one, and it was weird. A lot of the products had been on the shelves for a long time. None of this stuff came from there. None of this, just a coincidence, but I hadn't been in a Radio Shack, nor did I ever think I would be again, and uh, it was quite an experience. So we're going to look at a CD player that is way too big and a tape player that is way too small. So let's start with the tape player. What do I mean by way too small? So here is the cassette player. The wide angle kind of emphasizes, overemphasizes the size of it. But I do want to talk about this because this is very, very strange. Now, these are both realistic brand products, which, as you know, was a brand of Radio Shack. Radio Shack brand stuff was pretty good quality, I would say. Nine out of ten compared to like Panasonic, Sony, you know, those name top brands, Sharp, RCA, but not quite and definitely didn't have the cool factor. Like if you were at school and especially with the ZD player we'll look at in a minute, but it just it was a little nerdy. I don't know. It's just my perception. But, you know, now that I have fully embraced my nerdism, I don't care whatsoever. So there we go. <laughs> As you guys can tell that have been around for a while. We do all I got all kinds of geeky fun stuff for us to check out. So this was an oddity to me. Why is this such an oddity? It just looks like a regular tape player. This I want just you know, let's look at a comparison here. So here is another Radio Shack item. This is a uh, TRS-80. This belonged uh, didn't belong. It was part of a system that included the Tandy computer system, and this was a tape drive. You could save programs to a compact cassette. You could, you know, play the programs back from a compact cassette using these connections here on the side. It's also a very robust shoebox cassette recorder. It's it's a great little unit. But I wanted to sh show it to you in comparison with this device because this is pretty much what a portable cassette player size-wise looked like, you know, of the era that this came out in. So you can see that this is a very small device comparatively speaking. Now, when we get to the, the funky CD player a little bit later, it's the opposite story. So just as a point of reference, now if we were to take, let me see here, I'm just gonna grab the closest one that I can grab, a portable Walkman type device. This is a modern unit. Again, it's uh, it's somewhere in between. It's not quite as small as like a Walkman. I know this isn't a Walkman. I know that's not a Walkman, but size-wise, it's somewhere in between. It's definitely slimline and compact compared to this, but it's not quite as small as a personal cassette player, although it does have a built-in speaker, so it kind of does the same thing. Uh, but we're going to take a closer look at it here in just a second. Let me find a place for that. So, first of all, I love the fact that it's got the green background. Other cassette players like this one has like a reflective kind of a uh, silver look. Why do they have those at all? It's to create contrast so that when your tape is in there, you have something to contrast against the tape on the spools to see how much you have left. This is the realistic Miniset-9 automatic stop, I'm assuming, tape player. And it's, you know, it is it is what it is. It's a tape player. It's got a an analog counter. It's got a record battery life, a microphone, and obviously these uh, piano switch or paddle switch controls for the tape deck. Really cool stuff. And they got like these nice little notched grooves right on the edge. We'll test it out in a second. On the side here, we've got earphone, which is pretty indicative that it is a mono output. We've got a remote switch as well as a microphone input. And actually with that remote switch, we might be able to use this as a tape drive as well. I'm not 100% sure on that. On the back here, we do have an input for power and then batteries. I'll be using batteries today. It takes four AA batteries. It's a plastic material here on the back. You can see compact cassette recorder, mini set dash nine model 14812. Custom manufactured in Singapore for Radio Shack, T 
TC, a division of Tandy Corporation. And that's pretty much, there's no radio on the side here. You've got tone controls and you've got volume control. And that's about all there is to it. Every time we see a cassette recorder, we want to know what's going on under the hood. This may surprise you, but it is indeed, let's see if I can get it in focus. It's kind of hard to see, that's a mono head. So we do have a mono head, but it's, you know, this thing's built like a tank. Much higher quality than a lot of the stuff that's out there these days. Let's go ahead and test it out. I'm gonna set this uh, shoebox recorder off to the side here for now. And let's grab a cassette. That would probably be a good idea when we're doing our test here. Let's see what we got. All right, I don't know why I keep using White Christmas lately, but here is a tape copy of the audio from White Christmas. This is on a awesome tape. This is a TDK SA90 tape. This is a good, good tape. I believe this is type two. Usually when we've got the secondary notches right there, that would indicate type two. So let's go ahead and insert our tape. As you can see, it's pretty tight in there. I mean, it is very compact. I love how they put a wrist strap on here. Again, size comparison to this guy, which I would consider like something you could put in your pocket, although it's still pretty chunky, compared to this. And this thing is heavy. I mean, metal parts inside, quality product. I can't imagine a wrist strap with that, but whatever. It takes all kinds. So let's go ahead and, I mean, there's no input select. There's no way to turn it on or off per se, other than, you know, when you actually press down on here. So let's go ahead and press play and see what happens. Okay, so it doesn't wanna, there we go. It took a couple times. That's pretty good. And we could stop and let's fast forward there. Fast forward seems to work. It's going nice and fast. The shutter makes it look like it's going slower than it is, but. Tape counter works. We can reset that. So yeah, it seems to work fine. Um, one thing I noticed, I did play around with this just a tiny bit. I try not to do this before the shows, but um, it, it did seem like it was a, like if you press rewind, even with no tape in there, you'll get kind of this burst of static on the speaker there. I'm not sure what that's about exactly, but there it is. That is the Realistic Miniset-9. Now let's look at the, the real, to me, the more so an oddity of the two. Now let me do a little... Before we get to, this this product is about 1990, by the way. I would guess similar time frame on that unit right there, maybe a little earlier than that. This is a Discman, a Sony portable CD player from 1994. This is the D131. This one has a lot of nostalgic value. We've had it on the show before, blah, 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 blah. Move this out of the way. And um, similar in form factor to CD players, kind of that 1992 to 1994 era, the D121 that came before this. Similar in size, it was a little bit a little bit taller, as it were, from front to back. Um, but similar in size. Now, this CD player that I'm about to show you is a little earlier than that. It's 1990. Again, it's realistic brand, so Radio Shack brand. But again, a CD player from this era should be would be a little bit thicker, not entirely out of the ballpark. That's what I'm that's the point I'm trying to make. But for being, you know, similar era, look at the size of this thing. <laughs> This cracks me up. I have never seen, but you would be, this is probably the least sexy looking portable CD player of all time. When I was in high school in the mid to late nineties, everybody carried around portable CD players in these like leatherette kind of over the neck bags. In fact, I had a shop teacher that once was teasing us that we were carrying around purses, but you would sit in class. If you got through passing period, you know, quickly during high school, and I went to a, you know, a big, big city high school here in Denver, you know, you could, you could, you know, spend the difference of your time. It was a nine minute passing period. You only use two minutes of it. You could spend, you know, seven, eight minutes uh, before class started, just chill out with your headphones on, listening to your CD player. That was a cool thing to do. If you showed up with this, you would not be cool. I don't think this thing was ever cool. And like I said before, realistic products to me were never cool 
from the popular standpoint, they're just oddities. And this is definitely an oddity. I've never seen anything like it. Look at the size of it. Let's look at the width of it. So there's this one on its side compared to this. What an absolute beast this is. So now that we've established the size, we're gonna need to dedicate every inch of screen space we have to this thing. This is an AM FM, that's right, it has a radio. CD disc, stereo mate, tri-spot pickup, servo system, compact disc, digital audio, everything CD related of this era was very proud in the fact it had digital audio. That was a big deal. Um, it's This thing is a beast. On the front, we've got this gigantic radio tuner, AM, FM, FM stereo. Did it all. I mean, from a functionality standpoint, this is pretty awesome because it literally does everything. On the side here, we've got volume control. We've got the mode switch, headphone jack, CD out. I'm guessing that's a line output. And then a 9-volt power supply, which brings me to this, the massive battery compartment. That thing takes six double A's. Six double A's. That beats even my Kenwood, which I thought... Took more batteries than any CD player of all time at four, but six really takes the cake. August of 1990, a very interesting device. I don't think there's much on this side. It has this very geeky shoulder padded shoulder strap, neck strap thing. And I just, you know, I, I can't, I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw this thing. I'm like, we need to take a look at this. And for $5.99, it was worth, it was worth it just to see. I have no idea if any of this stuff worked, by the way. The little cassette player thing worked, that was cool. And um, this, all I've done is power it up to make sure the batteries were good. And besides that, I have not tested it. Obviously there's no speaker in this. So what we're gonna do is connect my external speaker, this guy right here. It's kind of cool to, to turn it on, so I'm gonna do that on camera. I know, I'm easily impressed. And even though this device obviously doesn't have Bluetooth, it's going to have a line output and this one has a line input, so it works really well. So I'm gonna to connect to the headphone jack on this. In this case, we can possibly test the line out as well, turn the volume down, and let's uh, see how it works. So there's a mechanical switch here to lock or unlock the CD door, and then you physically have to put your thumb under it to lift it up. It's got this guy up here, just like an old school, like a full-blown CD player would have that up there. It's like, a, it's like a disc stabilizer. Now, more contemporary portable CD players don't have that. There's just nothing in the lid because the disc snaps on to the spindle, as it were. There's like those little bearings, those spring-loaded bearings there. And then there's no need to, you know, do anything from the top because... I'll do it right now. Not that you guys have never seen this before. Isn't it amazing how you'll be watching a YouTube show about something you know all about, but somehow you want to watch it anyway? So the disc is snapped onto the spindle. It's not going anywhere. It can be turned upside down or otherwise, and it'll be fine. However, this doesn't have that. And by the way, <laughs> this is kind of clunky. There's this uh, little kickstand thing. So you kind of pop it up into position and usually it stays. And then you'll see that the, the disc does not snap into position there. It's just like a component CD player. It has to rest on there like that, and therefore it requires the clamp. It does have a window though, which is pretty forward thinking from that era. A lot of CD players, even the Sony here, didn't have a window on it. It wasn't until the next series, the D141, that they added it on that. So let's go ahead and now once it's in there, we'll have to see if you can, I'm sure there's no anti-skip on this, but we'll have to see how stable that disc is. But let's go ahead and flip it to CD mode. That's the middle position. And we'll spin up our disc. Spin, spins up pretty quick and it works. Awesome, let's try skipping. Sounds good. They're actually not half bad at all. That's cool. So look at that. That thing spins up quick. It works well. It's not making any weird noises. Now, can we turn it upside down? We can. So that little stabilizer deal does a really good job. Now, if we were to shake it, I'm sure 
we would have an issue. But that's pretty phenomenal, you guys. This thing is, let's see, how old is it? It's 21, 31 years old, and it's working great. It's working really, really good. So let's flip it to radio. Flipping over to radio mode. We got a nice analog radio. Now, the CD player itself, by the way, is very bare bones. There's no, you can search and skip. There's no program, there's no bass boost. This is cool though, actually this is really cool. Look at that stereo indicator light right there. Really cool, let's flip it to AM. Obviously an analog tuner. Awesome. This is cool. This is this is a this is more exciting to me than even the miniature tape player. Let me go ahead and pull this off of there. Put this there. So two oddities from Radio Shack. I think they're cool. Do you guys think they're cool? Have you ever seen these? Have you had them before? Let me know down in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Also, if you're wondering about that CD, um I'm prepared. I swear I'm prepared. So I recently picked up this box set of uh, Patsy Cline music and I've really been learning a lot about her career and everybody that you know hasn't really researched or just thinks oh she's a western country music whatever and that is indeed how she started out but by you know the early 60s before uh, she was sadly lost in a tragic plane crash in 1963 she had really transitioned to what they would call pop music back then, the Nashville sound, sort of a crossover of Nashville-based pop music, uh, songs like Crazy and, and, and things like that. And it's just great music. I don't know why I'm sharing this with you, but I um, somehow it legitimizes my purchases if I you know have it on the show. It's on the show. It was on the show, therefore, you know, I'm <laughs> just teasing you guys. But uh, I think I picked this up for eight, nine bucks. I've got one, a Hank Williams one coming as well. Then kind of going down this road of like, uh, country music, old like classic country that I've never really researched before. So it's been kind of an interesting journey. Um, but yeah, this is a great, great set. Very cool. 1990 as well. So it fits right in with the era that we're talking about there. All right, guys, that's going to do it for now. We went a little bit long, almost 18 minutes. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. Stay safe out there. Don't let down your guard. We're not quite out of the woods yet, um, but just hang in there and take care of each other. Uh, tell your loved ones you love them. Uh, definitely do that. Also, I want to throw in, thanks for staying till the end, and as a reward, you get a little free tip here, a little tip to tell you that we are soon going to be going live to do our CD giveaway. And if you've been watching our shows lately, all of them, you know that we're doing a big giveaway where you can win some free CDs or a free CD. And we'll tell you exactly how that's going to work in and on the live to celebrate passing and, you know, leaving it quite quickly in the dust, 15,000 subscribers. Just want to say thank you to each and every one of you guys. But that's going to do it for now, guys. Happy record hunting. We will see you next time.